Hey calculus class, today we are going to be talking about limits at infinity. This is topic six. So as of right now, I want you to take about a minute or so and jot down what do you currently know about limits and infinity. You should have said something that vertical, the, you currently know that vertical asymptotes exist when the values of a function get infinitely large or small as the x values approach some number a. Well, what we're going to be doing today is we'll be learning about what happens to a function as x gets infinitely positive or infinitely negative. So let's go ahead and investigate the very basic um, parent function of a rational function which is f of x equals 1 over x. So we currently know that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, right? We know that it doesn't exist, the function does not exist when x equals 0 because it's on the denominator. And we should also know just by the massive amount of times you've seen 1 over x is that it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So what happens to the y values as x gets really, really large? So what that means is, as the denominator gets really, really big, what happens to your output? So why don't you take a minute and pause and jot down what you think is going to happen to this function as the denominator gets very, very large. You should have said something along the lines that the output is going to get really, really, really small. Actually, it's getting very close to what number? Zero. And the value that the y value approaches is what we call the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to let f be a function defined on some interval from some number a to positive infinity. Then we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals L, means that the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily close to L by taking x sufficiently large. So a couple of graphs of what this can look like. Um, as you can see, each of them, there is a horizontal asymptote. This one, the first one, we have x is getting very, very large on the positive side and the graph is getting really close underneath the horizontal asymptote y equals l. And vice versa here. x is still getting very, very large positively, but the graph is above the horizontal asymptote and approaching the y equals l. Now this one kind of looks funny. Um, it is okay to cross horizontal asymptotes. It's not okay to cross vertical asymptotes. So this one, as you can see, as x is getting really, really large, the oscillating is getting really small, and eventually it will come and approach the horizontal asymptote y equals l. Now we can also say that a function can be defined on some interval from negative infinity to some number a. Then we would say that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals l meaning that the values of f of x can be arbitrarily close to L by taking x sufficiently large negatively. So here are a couple of graphs of what this looks like. As x is getting very, very large towards the negative side, the graph is approaching the horizontal asymptote y equals L. And this one shows the same idea just below. So this leads to a formal definition of horizontal asymptotes. The line y equals l is called a horizontal asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals l. So we're going to do an example. And just by looking at this graph, this picture, you should be able to tell me what the vertical and horizontal asymptotes are. Now the question is, can you tell me which a limit describes the horizontal or vertical asymptotes? So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. 
All right, so let's see how we did. This first one, as the, the limit as x approaches positive infinity, so as x is getting infinitely large, the graph is approaching some horizontal line, and that appears to be 2. As x is getting infinitely large on the negative side, you should see that the graph is approaching the horizontal line, negative 2. As the limit as x approaches positive 3, so here's positive 3, we can see that from both the right and the left, the graph is increasing towards a vertical asymptote, and so we would say positive infinity. x approaching 0, so here is 0, from the right and from the left, the graph is approaching negative infinity. Now when we look at the limit, as x approaches negative 2, so here is negative 2, from the right side, so coming this direction, we will see that the graph is also approaching negative infinity. So now we can write the equations for the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So we should have the horizontal asymptotes at y equals 2 and y equals negative 2, shown here. Um, proven with the calculus. Vertical asymptotes at x equals 3, x equals 0, and x equals negative 2, shown with these three limits. Remember that vertical asymptotes occur when a limit is approaching either infinity or negative infinity. All right, this leads into a very important theorem that will help us calculate the horizontal asymptotes algebraically. So if we have some value r, which is greater than 0, it's a rational number, which means fraction, and c is a constant, then we have the limit as x approaches um, infinity of some constant over x raised to some rational number, so some power, has to equal 0. So um, this it basically means that if you have a constant divided by x to the some number, so infinity to some number, that means the denominator is getting really, really, really large, like we saw earlier. So we have a constant divided by a really, really large number. We know that that's going to approach 0. If r is greater than 0 is a rational number such that x to the r power is defined for all x and c is a constant, then you can also say that as x approaches negative infinity will also give you a 0. So this means that when the denominator gets infinitely large or small, then the function approaches 0. So let's go ahead and do an algebraic example. So this is not an easy graph to look at. Yes, you can put this function into your graphing calculator, look at the graph that way, and determine the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. However, if you don't have the graphing calculator, how would you do it? So step one is determine if you have an indeterminate form. So you take your limit, plug in infinity, where the y's are, and <laughs> 5 times infinity, that will just give you infinity, same with 4 times infinity, and same here. So now you're left with the following. 2 minus some num big number is still infinity, and infinity plus infinity is infinity. So we know that infinity over infinity is an indeterminate form, therefore this should raise a red flag saying, magical algebra, magical algebra. So step 2. There's your algebra. You're going to factor out the term with the highest exponent out of both the top and the bottom. So if we were to look at our problem, you look at the top and the bottom. You are going to factor out between the two which one has the highest exponent. In this case, they're the same, y squared. Now, if this was a y cubed, you would factor out a y cubed from both the top and the bottom. So we're going to factor out a y squared. Remember, factoring out basically means you're dividing each term by whatever you factor out. And <clears throat> we should notice 
that we are going to simplify and evaluate what is left. And from this, we have y squared that can cancel. And now we are left with the following. Um, after you plug in infinity, you will get a constant over infinity to some power, which we now know is zero, according to that theorem. And same here, constant over infinity is zero. So now we're left with zero minus three over five plus zero, which gives me negative three over five. This means that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative three-fifths. All right, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do example two and example three on your own. All right, so how do we do? Hope you did okay. So I'm just gonna give you the answers. If you are confused or have any questions on how these answers came about, you can either post your question on Edmodo or ask me tomorrow. All right, so for example two, you should have gotten zero and negative infinity for example three. Finding asymptotes. So from this moment on, when you are asked to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes, you must show the calculus to support your answer. So what do I mean? So for this example, we are gonna find both the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So in order to determine the vertical asymptotes, you have to show me the calculus that leads you to the conclusion. Now the best way to start with vertical asymptotes is to, we could look at this function and determine what the vertical asymptote is by using algebra. That's fine, but then you have to take that value you get and put it as the limit as x approaches that value from both the left and the right and show me that the limit is approaching infinity or and or pop negative infinity. So I'm gonna do some factoring. So we have here, we have a sum of two cubes and here we have a um, common factor of x. So this is the sum of two cubes. If you do not remember this factoring pattern, please look either at the front of your book or um, notes from previous school years or in the review packets I gave you at the first day of school. All right, now we can look at the denominator and it is known that there will be a vertical asymptote when this is zero, and this will be zero only at x equals zero. So I'm gonna set up two limits, one from the left of zero and one from the right of zero. So I'm gonna evaluate each one by picking a number really, really, really close to whatever x is approaching from that side, plug it in, and see what I get. So for the left side of zero, I am going to plug in negative 0 0.01. From the right side of zero, I am plugging in positive 0 0.01. And when I do this, after simplifying, I get negative 100 from the left and positive 100 from the right. So this I'm satisfied with and can conclude that it will be approaching negative infinity from the left and positive infinity from the right. Therefore, I can now say for certain that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. All right, now you're going to determine the horizontal asymptotes and prove this with calculus. So just like I went through with the example one. So we have the limit as x approaches positive infinity, and I'm going to do the algebra I'm gonna factor out an x cubed in, since it's the highest exponent. The x cubes cancel. I'm gonna plug in infinity, and when I do that, I get a constant over infinity, which gives me zeros, and I'm left with one. Now, you don't just do one of the infinities. You also have to show me the other infinity. So in this case, negative infinity. You do the exact same thing when you plug in negative infinity, these will, oops, sorry, these cancel first, then you plug in negative infinity and those will go 
to zero and you are left with one in this case. So I've just showed that as the X is getting infinitely large in the positive direction and in the negative direction, the function is approaching some constant number. In this case, it is the same number, therefore I only have one horizontal asymptote, and it, it is okay if these numbers are different, that just means you have two different types of horizontal asymptotes. So I can conclude that y equals one is a horizontal asymptote. I hope you enjoyed learning about horizontal and vertical asymptotes with calculus, and I will see you tomorrow. If you have questions and or comments, please go to Edmodo tonight, and I will be able to answer any also in class. Have a good night.